Sounds like you're going to get one more week out of hashtag Glenn's Not Dead. This is Corey, and this is the other thing at the podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Uh, right up off the bat, <laughs> uh, this has been a crazy, hectic weekend for both Rob and I. So yeah. we're doing this entire thing over Skype. So this is the Yay. Skype experiment episode. We'll see how. Uh, and once I move to California and leave you behind uh, in this whole life, uh, <laughs> I guess this is how we'll have to do it from now on. Yeah, so it'll just be it. like this every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe on better technology, maybe not on a five-year-old laptop that has zero available space. <laughs> well, the, well, part of part of what is so fun about this, I think, is the fact that I have you, like, on the huge computer screen in front of me. So it's kind of... Now, obviously, there's no video this week, so it's just, like, this huge, like, monolithic, it, totally, like, the future is now kind of moment, and I love that. <laughs> It's a TV from Back to the Future. That's exactly, yeah. It is, yeah. I'm Excellent. expecting any second, like, you're fired, written across. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no! Fly! <laughs> you're fired! <laughs> uh, and a private joke for those of us who can't see me and Corey on Skype. Sorry about that. But we do appreciate that you listen. And thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your downloads, all of your listens, that kind words that you sent to us in email and uh, on Facebook. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't taken the chance, go to iTunes. Make sure you like and subscribe on there. Give us a rating and a review, five stars, and let us know what you like, what you don't like, what we can change to make this podcast uh, better for you. And, of course, make sure that you um, like and subscribe on uh, on iTunes or Stitcher or Dogcatcher or whatever your RSS feed of preference is. Or you can always go to odanthem.com and find the links there. And while you're on odanthem.com, make sure you click through our link, uh, uh, link to Amazon. I'm going to make sure Corey puts that in the show notes. Uh, we'll be hopefully having a click-through banner soon enough that you yep. can uh, actually shop on Amazon and cost you nothing, helps out the show, so that we can quit our regular jobs that are going to make us get up in about five hours. So, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, I'm off tomorrow, so that good I'll news for me. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I have to be in court in five hours. <laughs> oh, another place you can uh, uh, vote for us, or review, mm-hmm. if you will, is uh, the Mobbies. Where we are That's an official right. nominee for best podcast, and and I got to ask you, how is it that we are in our third mobbies and we're just now getting nominated? Well, uh, for one, the podcast is a new thing this particular run, right? So hopefully, uh, this is just a, the first of many mobbies that we win for best podcast from here on out. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, now listen, I do know that we we talk a lot of sports ball, sports, sports, sporty sports, sports, uh, beef jerky, trikes. Sports, sports. <laughs> it's a special message out to some of the other competitors. Um, I, I think I wanted to take this opportunity. Uh, uh, if Think about this like our, our stump speech. Like Nick Mosby gives a speech announcing he's running for mayor. Right. And like, here's the reason why you should vote for me kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, we've all seen it before. Uh, I would like to make this the digital version of that. For the mobbies. Okay. So, uh, in case you're just joining us for the first time, uh, first of all, welcome. Of course. Uh, we're not as bad as we seem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that, Corey's not as bad. I certainly not, am just as horrible as I we're see. We're not as uh, street hard as we look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> street hard, yeah, yeah. yeah. I look at that baby face and what I think is street hard. <laughs> okay, so a real quick sidebar uh, <laughs> before we get into why you should vote for us. Uh, <laughs> this happens a lot. <laughs> this, I'm a, I, I've been rocking the beard for a long time now. Well, and can we put some air quotes around that beard? Or rocking? <laughs> I mean, either either part you could air quote. I mean, it doesn't right. have to be one or the other. But uh, uh, anybody with a beard might know this part where it just gets like horrible and the whole thing just sort of disgusts you and you're just like i need to rid myself of all the evil that this has accumulated over the last couple months meaning uh, that you have cheetos in your beard and you had to shave yeah, it off just couldn't get like you wash and wash but it just doesn't happen <laughs> shampoo's not the proper thing for a beard <laughs> anywho um so i shaved it all off i was just like fresh start and i look so fucking young it's not even <laughs> like Fifteen. I, this is the guy I remember meeting in two thousand and two. I'm I'm a uh, I'm thirty one years old right now. Even with the beard, I look maybe like what twenty seven or so. At best, twenty seven. Yeah, I seriously would say younger than that. Twenty one, maybe eighteen. 
But now I just look like a teenager. Oh, you meant with the beard. Yeah. Yeah, with the beard, you could pull off maybe 25. Still not that much older. Right. But without the beard. Yeah. I could maybe be in high school. Oh, yeah. I could... (laughs) I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to try that hard. It'd be like uh, uh, the kids on the uh, what's that show that all the kids like? Nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, exactly. Nine hundred two one zero. That's what the, the Haps kids are uh, watching these days, right? That's what I do. I walk up to a bunch of kids with a skateboard and a <laughs> hat words on hat words, a hat on backwards, <laughs> and I say, "Hey, kids, what's the happenings? You watching the nine hundred two one zero?" So so basically, you are uh, you're a Colonel Sanders from that new KFC commercial, and <laughs> yeah. or and or I, Steve Buscemi from Thirty Rock, basically. I am, but I, I look like I'm 15, so it's right. almost age. Pro- <laughs> Does that guy go to our school? I haven't seen him before. So are you telling me you're going to go trolling around at local colleges and high schools for ladies? I didn't say ladies. <laughs> for men? No, Wait, I, I didn't, didn't realize. New revelations here on the Odia the podcast. New friends, I guess. Just. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Sorry. So among now that now that you know I look like I'm 15 years old, take me completely seriously. (laughs) The mobbies are out. You can vote on them. We are nominated for best podcast, but best Twitter and best Instagram. I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know why the Facebook page. Not deserving of those last two. Yeah, not deserving of those last two. I don't know. I don't know why the Facebook page didn't make the cut, but uh, whatever. Um. For as since we started this podcast, both you and I have uh, been wanting to make all kinds of different media. Yeah, the podcast seems to be the the most constant proliferation of that. Easy, but it's easy to do. It's a weekly thing. It's a and weekly thing. It's a chat. It's uh, it's us talking about the things that we find interesting. Right. Because what I had dreamed of, we we've always sort of dreamt big with the anthem. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we're super professional. <laughs> yeah, le- talking about leaving uh, cell phones on. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I was in such a panic trying to get this to work that I forgot to <laughs> turn that off. So, thank you very much. <laughs> but the the thought process was uh, maybe we turn into the next big thing. Let's just everybody dream along with Rob and me for a moment here. <laughs> We turn into the next big thing, and then you could say you've been listening to us since then. It's right. like uh, if Steve Jobs had a podcast in the garage with him and Waz, you know? Right. Like, wouldn't you be interested in being able to see the entire journey weekly throughout that? And, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and I think there's so many interests that the two of us have, like sports and politics and... Sports ball. Sports ball. <laughs> Cam Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a weird pull. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, basically, here's here's the mantra. Uh, we're, we're local guys. Uh, we're trying to make honest art, I would like to say. And we want to recruit people who want to make honest art. Yeah. And you've had your books out. I, I have, we have had books out, yeah. I have working on the feature. We're working on a web series. Right. We're working on more podcasts and music. Uh, music, all of it, all of it's within the vanguard. Like we're we're all we want a little bit of everything, and I think that anybody who wants to be a part of it is welcome in our doors. Right. And you know, hopefully one day it's going to be actual doors. Like at a, a, <laughs> there are doors on the Earth, the Anthem Studios, and <laughs> deep below the earth in Parkville, Maryland. You can just push the door open and get right in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a gatekeeper. Not even a gatekeeper. Yeah. But uh, I guess I would just like to take the opportunity before I even, you know, beg you all for your votes and just say thank you because I love doing this. I think it's I think it's a great place for us to be. Uh, I love having our weekly chats about the things in the news. I like how we yes. hold off talking about some of these things until podcast time so it can remain <laughs> fresh. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, anybody who supports this podcast is supporting art in a way, and those are the people who are the real heroes. Yeah, and I would like to encourage those, if this is the first episode, 
episode you're listening to. Join Katie, Carla, and Olivia, our, possibly our youngest weekly fans. Uh, join Colin, some of our most immature fans. Uh, <laughs> Colin and, and, is more immature than the children. That's the, yes. <laughs> that's the important message to take away from that. But uh, we, I think we have a, a growing group of loyal listeners, and we do this for, for all of you guys. Uh, like I said, I've said before, Corey had this idea five years ago. I wish we would have jumped on it five years ago because no matter how bad a week is, we really have a lot of fun doing this. And, you know, we do it for you. It's to bring you into our personal conversations. We've been having conversations like this for uh, over a decade now. Um, and now you're just uh, kind of tuning in and uh, and joining in with us. So we're, we're glad to have you, and uh, I hope that you will join us weekly on this. All right. So, yay, vote for us. Yay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Make sure you go to the Baltimore Sun website, uh, and we'll have it in the show in the show notes where you can just click on the link mm-hmm. uh, and vote for us. So that would be fantastic. Or, you know, Mob- Mobby's 2015, if you Google it, it'll show right up, all that sort of stuff. But, and I think that they're using a hashtag, too, not to count for votes, but obviously it'd be great if you can retweet us or tweet at us and include the hashtag Mobbies 2015 Yep. But uh, as you know, we are your Baltimore podcast. That's why we want you to vote for us on the Mobbies. Uh, but uh, I it would be remiss if we didn't just jump right in <laughs> to <laughs> apparently our stereotype. Sports ball. Yeah. So, <laughs> Such uh, a good day today. I saw the... Uh... I went today, went to M&T yeah. Bank Stadium. To the bank. To the bank. Yeah. Uh, and I saw the Baltimore Ravens play against the San Diego Chargers and the referees of the NFL. Right. The horrible uh, referees continue. God, it is just the worst. The, yeah. the, the officials in the NFL this year have been just the worst I have ever remembered them. Uh, yeah, and it's insanely bad. Let's go back a week real quick, because uh, I was quite upset with that Arizona game. Number one, the uh, legal formation call not catching Ursel, like, clearly signaling himself as eligible. Yes, giving the international symbol for eligibility. Right. That's the same move that Rob does when he walks into the pub. He sort of (laughs) strokes down his belly. Yeah. Letting all the... (laughs) I stroke something. It ain't the belly. Uh. <laughs> I'd like to imagine that we'll shoot a, uh, a National Geographic style show at some point where yeah. you're, you're just walking into the pub and it's like the young cheek signals his availability to the mating class. What? 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 <laughs> it's my the, mating call. I don't know if you guys know that. The females seem less than enthused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too true. Uh, um, but yeah, no, the, the but, officiating has been horrible. And you were at the game, so you didn't get to see. But I think it's even getting worse week by week. Because I, 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 at the bar, obviously, I had the benefit of watching five games all right. at once, and just the same inconsistency is all across. Well, I turned on Sunday Night Football for a couple minutes to see if I yeah. would score any points in fantasy. <laughs> uh, How's your team doing this week? I'm down by. 40 right now, <laughs> but it's totally manageable. <laughs> I have two, I have two people left to play. Yeah. So all I need is uh 20 something point games from Andrew Luck, who is okay. totally healthy and not injured at all. hundred percent healthy. And, uh, uh, who is it? Jonathan Seward, who I picked up off the waiver wire. So very that often, is- very often waiver wire picks turn into 20 point games. So it- I would assume. I think that's just, the way it works, right? Just, just casual pickups equal twenty point games. So let's let's uh, roll with it and see what happens. If you're not following Corey on FanDuel, you're missing <laughs> out. You, you, go to FanDuel. Use secret code OTA to join our league. Don't actually put that in. It won't do you anything. Though actually, no. they might have just gotten to that point just by dumb <laughs> luck. <laughs> yeah, but I would ask that FanDuel does send us a check. Uh, yeah. We need some of those advertising dollars, please. Three people typed in OTA and it sent us to you, so here's your nickel. <laughs> like the billion. How much are they spending? Come on, they got it. Um, but yeah, no, so, so you need 40 points from – and Andrew Luck may give you 22, 23 points. Yeah. But well, I don't, Jonathan sure Stewart, Jonathan. like, well, the Colts run defense oh. sucks, so maybe I'll get it. Hey, yeah, sure, maybe. All he needs to do is break out, like, four of them. 
four eighty yard touchdown runs, and I'll. Well, and, oh. and I've I've had Marcus Colston, our uh, Hofstra alum, on my team for uh, all of last season and part of this season. But with my luck, I dropped him just in time for him to have a two touchdown, a yeah. uh, hundred yard game. So I have know. him on my bench in my fat dog league, and I was just like, oh, god damn it! <laughs> yeah, who would have thunk? Oh well. Yeah. I always had uh, him but, on there, like, as a just-in-case. Like, if I need a warm body to start, like, he'll be good for something. Yeah, he'll put up ten catches and maybe a score, but not a day like he had today. Right. Just looking for him, so. Seven but, touchdowns um, from Breeze. I know. It tied the NFL record. Insane. It was a bit a big day for NFL records. Yeah. I was, uh, uh, that was game a, had a couple of them, so. It was a big day for people going out for the season, too, like Steve Smith oh. and Le'Veon Bell. Did they announce he's actually out for the season? Uh, I think he tore his Achilles, so I think it's oh. pretty automatic. Well, shit. Yeah. That's, uh, but, uh, again, as you pointed out at the top here, uh, the, the Ravens were fighting not only the uh, the Chargers, but also the referees. Last week, we had that wonderful... And listen, I got Chris Johnson on my team, on my fantasy team, so I appreciate the yards. I do. But it was a bullshit call. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I... What, I don't understand why he would just let go of Chris Johnson if he was under the assumption that the play wasn't done. Right. And, and I mean, I'm look, if you're looking at the – and apparently, was there a whistle blow? Somebody said they heard a whistle blow. That's why I they let go. I didn't, like, hear a whistle blow, but I thought, like, if somebody would have come in and just drilled Chris Johnson while he's being held down like oh, yeah. that, like, it would have been a huge penalty, 15 yards, automatic first down, like – Probably a fine, too. Yeah, they would have made the argument, like, oh, he was clearly down. Right. So you let go of him. Like, when, where was he going? Yeah. It's not like he was going to, like, wriggle free of whatever he did. <laughs> well, and, and I get those plays where they're in motion and you roll over somebody and keep running. But it was clear that he had stopped. He yeah. had stopped. He even, I think, thought he was tackled. And then when he popped up, he just went running <laughs> again and they let him go. It's like it's almost like he got up from like being tackled, and he looked at the referees, just like, "Why aren't you running? Just keep going." <laughs> and he's just like, "All right, fuck it," and he just goes, and it's just like, "Ha first down." Well, and then today there was a couple of those tackles that should have been uh, probably just regular tackles, but they got penalized for unnecessary roughness. And it's like, what? What do you? Where? How can we conduct ourselves? To fall in with these, it, really, you need the same like refing crew every week, so you learn what they call and what they don't call. Well, and you know what? It's not even about like, you know, there there's people who will automatically go to like, you know, like, well, we need robot officials. <laughs> we, we need the computer to call the game, and it's just like, well, there's so many like points where it's like, is his knee down? It's sort of a judgment call. Like, you need a human yeah. being. Like, I'm not saying kill the refs. I'm just saying like. Get better at your jobs. Well, and I think that it does throw a little bit of a wild card into the game just to have that human judgment. Like, a computer would say, well, the fabric of his pants had touched the ground, therefore he was down. And when you get those close calls that really could go either way, that's where you get a little excitement in the game. Yeah. But not if not in these places where it's clearly clear that you blew a call. And who was it this week that said that they should find the refs if they blow calls like that? Oh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hear yeah. that one. But somebody on ESPN, uh, and I always go to Stuart Scott, but R.I.P. Stuart Scott not with us anymore. Um, but somebody, I think, on ESPN said he's on the yeah, cool listen. side of heaven. Yeah, <laughs> behind that velvet rope. <laughs> um, but somebody said that they should find the refs, and you know these guys. You know they don't make a like NFL money, but they do make money, and just say, listen, get the call right. You don't get to just come out here and do any old thing and then go home and get paid. So. I I think that in a in addition to the refs getting fined, they should be covered more than they currently are. What do you mean? Like, okay, so it was like the five minutes left in the second quarter or something like that mm-hmm. when I real, realized that it was Gene Stenator who was the referee for the Ravens right, game. Right, yeah. And it was just like, he's the one who always fucks us. <laughs> always. <laughs> He's yeah. the one who caused the entire stadium to start chanting bullshit on national television. Oh, I remember that. Wasn't I, don't, that great? I don't remember what the play was, but I remember he was the referee <laughs> because right. I was so angry about what had just transpired. And I was, oh man, the, you could see that the Ravens were just holding off from playing like the like boom, boom, 
chant, like the little thing to cause people to go defense. Right, yeah. Because they didn't want us all to chance bullshit. Because the <laughs> boos were were long and they were hard and they were ferocious. And uh, oh. in addition to that, I think Ray Lewis was smoking pot up in the owner's box. Yeah, that's right. And uh, if you follow Corey on Twitter, <laughs> uh, why you wouldn't you? Right, of course. Make sure you do that. Uh, at LegendCB5 for Corey, at Robert N. Cheek for me uh, on Twitter, and at O. The Anthem for Mobby for nominated. At o the Anthem. <laughs> uh, we just start throwing that in front of everything. The Mobby nominated podcast. It's going to be like uh, uh, when somebody gets an Oscar nom for something and it's like Oscar nominee Leonardo DiCaprio, Oscar winner Kate Winslet. You know, like they do yeah. the movie trailer. Exactly. It'll just be like Mobby nominated O the Anthem on Twitter. And like some of those other podcasts, unlike some of those other podcasts, we would appreciate a mobby. We wouldn't just be like, oh, another award, whatever. Yeah, yeah no, we, we will show up. I, I will take off of work and come up there, even if there's no ceremony. Just come up to Baltimore Sun and be like, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Just to set up a podium outside. <laughs> just us. <laughs> just, just me, you, and Rachel being supportive. Oh, Rachel's running the camera, clearly. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we can put it on Periscope. Um, but, yeah, so, but the Ravens pulled out a win today. We are now two and five, correct? Yeah. No. Two and six. Yeah. We should, uh, cool. we should just, uh, uh, let the rest of the season go, I think. Well, here's the thing. Was Steve Smith um, out? Like, it seems yeah. like a reasonable. I would almost rather get the pick, to be honest and, with you. And so that's the thing is, do you lose out and just get the pick, or. I mean, if we win out, we could be ten and six. That that could get us into the playoffs. It could, but I don't have faith in this team. <laughs> yeah, going, rolling off eight in a row, you know. Well, and here's the bigger question: um, Does Steve Smith come back another year? Because he said he was going to retire, but obviously he'd be frustrated by not having the year. I I don't think now is the time to ask him that. Right. I I know he's going to get the question tomorrow, and he might even answer like, "No, you know what? I'm done." Like, I can't... This is a sign. Yeah, yeah. I, I just can't rehab this and come back and be me. Yeah. And, you know, if you hear that, then you should you should react justly. Right. But much like Glenn in The Walking Dead, don't necessarily believe it until a couple <laughs> weeks later when you see it for sure. Hashtag Glenn's not dead. <laughs> By uh, the way, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch the uh, Dirty Shore live stream. Uh, yeah. How, how did you uh, take tonight's episode? Uh, well, and make sure you check out DirtyShore.com, uh, Dirty Shore UG on Twitter and Facebook for the links to the live stream. We do live stream every of the episodes of that show, uh, so make sure you check those out. But uh, we were talking about, you know, it's it was a good distraction episode. No, no, nobody there believed that um, they were actually going to address Glenn. And in fact, I think the going sentiment is they'll address Glenn at the mid-season premiere next year. You know, right. on the second half of the season. We just won't know what happened for a while. But I did see a lot of reactions from people saying, uh, what the hell? How are we not going to talk about Glenn? Don't you know this show? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Um, I, really, yes, I really dug it, though. I thought the was, acting was phenomenal. I thought the writing was great. I thought Eastman, it was a great story. I love the character. And I, as soon as I, I have now come to terms with this show, and as soon as I was like, Oh, I love this guy. He did a horrible thing. I still love him. Shit, they're going to kill him. That's how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not surviving because if I can be okay with him, you know, starving that guy to death, uh, then they're not going to let him live. Well, I knew he wasn't surviving because we haven't seen him in the future. Hmm. Because I that didn't... doesn't necessarily matter, though. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, I just knew that this was going to be a disposable character. I'm, I it was, And the guy who plays him is, I, he's one of those, like, Oh, that guy. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. Him stuff before, and he's always good. Yeah, he's wonderful. Usually, he's like the angry uncle or the angry dad, <laughs> and it was weird for him to be like very calm and centered. But um, yeah, but make sure everybody <laughs> check out DirtyShoreUnderground dot com. Uh, th- when this post, it will have been up since Monday. Uh, and new episodes of that podcast every Thursday, and we do bonus episodes um, right now for The Walking Dead, and then we'll find something else to do after that. So, well, you you know who he also reminds me of, like as an actor. Is that is uh kind of like Larry Miller, uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, taller, he, broader Larry Miller. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's got that same sort of like feel about him, right? Like he's very, uh, I don't know. I just like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy him. I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was one of their best yet. 
And Morgan is one of my favorite characters, so I love a Morgan-centric episode. Yeah. yeah it's nice to have that. Um, but to get, I guess, back on track from uh, one group, the NFL refs not doing their job, to another group not doing their job, uh, my struggles with the police, pretty well documented. I think everybody knows how I feel about that. Real quick, before we yeah. go on to that. Okay. I hate to cut you off mid segue God damn it. it. You step on the segues every <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> Here's the thing. There is one other sports ball related thing. We got to touch on it before we move on to the next part. Oh, is it about that team from Kansas City? I don't give a shit about. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we are recording this at one a.m. on Sunday. Yeah. Um, when I turned off the World Series, it was seven to two. Okay. To come in here. Ooh. Yeah, and what it was probably in like the sixth or seventh inning. Yep, KC won seven to two. Mets so- didn't even put up a win. So, yeah, congratulations to the Kansas City Royals, I guess, as much as I yeah. hate you. Yeah. Uh, and you know and what? I I said this to Rachel. Uh, New York Met fans are just people who happen to live in New York. Yeah. Like real human people who just happen to live in New York. <laughs> right. You know, so I, I, kind of, I kind of respect the Mets and the Mets fans. Yeah. But I just... That Royals team is so cocky, but they're so good. Well, and, and, and that's they, the thing is, yeah, you hate them because they're cocky, but they're cocky because they're good. That's the problem. I just wish that they were good and then they could be cocky. Like, yeah. The well, Red Sox, for example. The worst part is when uh, the they finish off in New York. Like, yeah. That's got to be heartbreaking for Mets fans. At City Field. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. But Which you know what? I still call Shea Stadium, by the way. It's yeah. all, it'll always be Shea, even if it's not even Shea. It's I'm, still I'm, Shea. I'm kind of shocked that City was able to keep the naming rights to the stadium after, like, yeah. all the <laughs> financial nonsense. <laughs> they uh. used bailout money to keep the stadium. Yeah. God keep damn the it. sponsorship. But, yeah, so uh, Kansas City's World Series, which is great because that means I think we are two, a hundred and, uh, 170 days. From opening day? Sounds about right. And uh, about 100 days from kit- pitchers and catchers reporting. Can't, yeah. can't beat that. Um, and, of course, you know, more close to home, uh, coming up in December will be the uh, Fan Fest. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I, I dread the thought that I think it may fall on the weekend. We're actually in Miami. No, it's but not that weekend. It's not? No. Great. So make sure you come out to Fan Fest because you'll be able to catch uh, Corey and I and the whole Odie Anthem crew uh, out of Fan Fest. Maybe we'll have some giveaways or something to give to you while we're there. Um, but at least you can come in and get a picture with us and uh, certainly we'll sign autographs or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, I, I may or may not have been spoiled by the rock star treatment I'm getting from <laughs> from some of our fans uh, who I've met in person. Or come to Miami and take our pictures like clubbing about, you know? <laughs> First us of all, are you planning on going to clubs? Us and Pitbull. Yeah, <laughs> out, there, out there rocking the clubs. Now, what you want to do is you want to walk down the beach until you see two bodies that are actually <laughs> reflecting the sunlight, and then you be like, "Oh, that's Rob and Corey." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the anthem takes Miami. The, the, Rob's the one just walking around with his shorts in his hand, going like, "I thought this was a nude beach. I thought this was America." <laughs> <laughs> come no, on, I just, I come on, babies with the tops. Hand. Let's lose them. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm really looking forward to that. The weather's turned. It's getting hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. I'll be so glad it's just hot. And <laughs> you gonna... can sit inside chain smoking all day. <laughs> just being like, what? What's with the humidity here? <laughs> it's like it's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, yes. Yeah. So anyway. Looking forward to that. Yeah. But, speaking um, of the South. Yes. And we would be remiss if we didn't. Good transition. We would be uh, remiss if we didn't talk about it. Uh, it's come, A South Carolina police officer has come under some fire. Uh, after a video of him removing a uh, a young lady from her desk and from the room went viral, uh, he's actually lost his job now. Uh, so there's that, um, and I, uh, I I'm not sure how to feel about it. So uh, thoughts? What are your thoughts about it? Um, I think we're quick to make decisions in these types of situations, like yeah. right or wrong decisions. But I'm not ready to make a decision on this yet, I think. Okay. Because all I really know about the Kate or all I really know about it is uh is the video of the girl getting thrown to the ground. 
Okay. And being dragged out of class. And the information that uh, she was on her cell phone, the teacher told her to stop. Right. The teacher tried to take the cell phone. The student refused. Yeah. A principal was brought in, or a vice principal was brought in. An administrator. Yeah, Listen. you're done. Hand over the cell phone. No, I'm not doing it. I'm sitting here. You know, like, she was basically doing the, like, go ahead, fucking arrest me. Yeah. And then, you know, the cop comes in and tells her to do the same thing. She refuses. And then, it, you know, I'm... I'm not the... I'm not the type to defend cops on this, on the sort of like, you know, like, oh shit, he has a gun. Bam, bam, bam. Like, you know, like I was feared for my life. It turns out it was a piece of gum, whatever the case may be. But there has to be a certain point where we are accepting of letting cops like detain people after there has been plenty of fair. If there's like 15 minutes of pre-warning that you might be possibly arrested for this, then like, just give up. Well, like and, if, they, and if the cops I'll, if the cops ever pull me over, and you know they they say like, all right, step out of the car, you're under arrest. I'm, my move isn't going to be like bullshit. What the fuck did I do? You know, I'm just going to be like, okay. We then call that like, the Rob Cheek, by the way. And then when they say uh, say, is there anything you'd like to say? I'd say like, not with my lawyer, not without my lawyer present. Right. And yeah. then we'll handle it there. But the more oh, you, the more you so fight, simple. the more you fight up the the uh, when you don't need to. Like she was clearly losing the situation. Yeah, there's no where along the line where she had the upper ground until the video of her just selectively getting thrown to the ground is out there in the universe. You know. Yeah, and I will say this is not like the other South Carolina video that came out the last couple of weeks of a young man being shot by a police officer who came up on him after he, they set him up for a drug deal. Right. I mean, that's clear cut, and I think you and I both agree that there are some inappropriate actions that were taken by that officer. Well, and and that's more of the situation in which I'm talking about. Like, right, yeah. There's There's been many a situation where a cop has you know, like, immediately gone to the shoot the person and say, like, I felt my life was in danger. Right, and they shout out, he he was driving right at me. Dude, yeah. You were, you were in the side of the car, come on. The cop the cop who did that, that particular uh, shooting was nowhere near the front of the car at a point where you would realistically worry about getting run over. And it followed the car. Had he stepped back, it would have been clear. But yeah, he and, walked but with he could have so. He could have also chased him. Right. You know, if instead of shooting him in the yeah, back, yeah, like of the head. I don't, I don't think buying a buying a dime bag is worth, you know, two pieces of lead in the head. You know, and I gotta say, the whole police state thing aside, can we please talk about marijuana? A state two thousand miles away from that where that kid is, he would have just bought that at a store at right. a Seven Eleven, essentially. Sure. Um, so, I, I mean, the marijuana policy is just ridiculous altogether. They, they did a, a five man operation. Well, yeah. The fact just, that they were like doing a sting on him and everything like that like, for, for a little bit of pot, for yeah. a little bit of pot. Come on guys. Uh, uh, I just can't, but here's what I'll say. You know what the difference is between that officer and the one in the school? What's that? The one in the school got fired by his police department. And here is what I, here's what I'm going to say. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Uh, I, I, Everybody's been ranting on it, and I'm just going to join the cacophony, the cacophony saying, "We need this is a societal problem. We need to raise kids better." Yeah. Uh, and I am perfect. I am really disrespectful to police, but I tell people that I, I'm respectful up and until the point that I know that I can, I should be disrespectful. You don't know that point, right? And it's not when they say, "Hey, how are you doing?" Uh, you've been with me when I've seen cops before. Yeah, I'm perfectly friendly with them, and I talk to them very. But when they're like, uh, "Hey, step out of the car," that's when I'm going to say, "Well, you know, you, no, I'm not going to get out of the car, and and we can have a discussion about the terms for which I'll get out, that kind of thing." Right. But uh, there's a societal problem. We're not raising our children the way that we should. Uh, I had the opportunity to go in with uh, to a meeting. Uh, with a bunch of guys this weekend, actually uh, talking about that and how you know part of this big scheme isn't just the the cops. It's not just the law. It's we got to improve society. But that aside, she's disrespectful. The teacher asked her to stop. Administrator asked her to stop. Cop asked her to stop. All that's fine. And in fact, she should have been suspended. She probably uh, should have been removed. But 
he got fired because he didn't follow his training when it came to dealing with people. Yeah. And that's my problem with it. It's not that maybe she deserved to get yanked out of the seat. Maybe she did. And Mr. Miller from uh, my civics class in ninth grade would have turned the desk over on me and then grabbed me by the neck and pulled me out of the room if I was disrespectful. It was a different time, though. Um, and But he was using holds. And, and you and I disagree about how she fell out of the chair. It clearly looks to me like he leveraged her backwards and out. Well, I mean, to me, at least it looked like... You know, I'm not... Uh, I'm no... Uh, What's the what's the forensic examiner or whatever like the person right. who like figures out the whole crime scene? Cryptozoologist is that? No, that's <laughs> I'm no I'm no Law and Order CSI, but <laughs> right. uh, I would like to say that uh, there there did seem to be a little bit of like she got hurled to the ground so aggressively because she bucked at the right moment. And and I will uh, maybe there is some part of that, but but uh, the details of it are she was a a, a not disabled but mentally deficient person uh, who had lost her mother and was now an orphan and um, she has a lot of she had a lot going on in her life and the thing is this is why the cops train their SROs the security or school resource officers the way that they do because you're not dealing with with grown adults you're dealing with children right and he needed to deal with her differently so I'm glad he lost his job and fuck him and and I hope he uh, can never get work again. I hope that girl sues the police and um, she doesn't have to worry about money the rest of her life. I I think that we shouldn't be so quickly to say I hope he never works again. And this is his third complaint for excessive force. Okay, that's fine. I I'm and he's been actively racist and he's probably a With drug his black user. girlfriend. Uh, he has a history of being condescending and having complaints about his. Uh, mentality towards people of other races. And listen, I, that is the perfect excuse. If you are, if you don't like black men, let's say, what's your perfect cover? Dating a black girl? Yeah. Why not? I've dated women of all colors and I hate all men equally. So, I mean, really. <laughs> I've dated policemen's daughters and I hate police. That doesn't stop me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I... I would just rather – this would be one of those ones where I'd rather just hold back and make decisions later Well, like and not I don't, rush to judgment. I don't think that he got fired for what happened, but like the video. What he got fired for was because his boss said, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You didn't do your training and you're fired. Right. And uh, what I've been advocating for recently is a in that, an insurance program that all police officers, no matter where they work, have to carry insurance. Because this being his third complaint, he probably wouldn't have been able to be a police officer by now. No one would insure him. Mm. And each individual officer pays for their own insurance. And if you can't get insurance, you can't work as a cop. That's what it comes down to. And and a cop in any capacity. Because he had been relegated to the wasteland of the police department. The school resource officer. In theory, I believe you. But uh, I also am of the mind that insurance makes everything worse. So, uh, I well, any insurance I have to pay for certainly certainly does. But yeah. um, I mean, you know, the reason like, why the reason why if I if I went into the hospital right now for an emergency appendectomy, yeah, it would cost you know fifteen thousand dollars or some shit, right? Because you know I what go you in, do? because I go into the emergency room and they check me in for a couple of days and I'd have surgery and right. every single one of those things costs ten times more than it would have if insurance never existed. Well, and here's, my, here's what I would say to that. Two things. Number one, you know what you should do is get every credit card you can and travel the world and then come back home and declare bankruptcy and be like, see, do you see the medical bills? It's insane. That's why I have to declare it. It's not the $35,000 six-month trip around the world. It was the medical bills. <laughs> or it's all this student loan debt. Thing. Oh God! Don't even get me started on single loan debt. <laughs> uh, but or or uh, go to a single payer system where everybody's covered, and uh, I think that would work better. But what we have now sucks certainly. And yes, I agree with you that insurance doesn't necessarily make anything better. I got my car wrecked by a seventeen-year-old girl, and my rates went up. So what sense does that make? Bunch of savages. The you insurance yeah. companies. You didn't get out of the way. Um, <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> Speaking of something. We shouldn't be judging now, and maybe we should wait a little bit more time before we make up our minds. 
Yeah, no, uh, the already... Republicans had a debate. <laughs> I'm already made up my mind. I'm not. Ju- I'm not voting for any of these guys. You, so there isn't a single one you'd vote for. No. Let's. I'm barely going to vote for a Democrat if a good third party came out. Let's play a game of everybody is worthless. Okay. So, uh, say uh, Hillary gets locked up for something Benghazi related. <laughs> Which looks more and more likely. I'm just saying, like, let's throw out some examples here, right? Okay, yeah. Hillary gets locked up. Bernie has a heart attack. <laughs> it's Martin O'Malley. <laughs> Mart- Martin O'Malley is exposed as knowing something about, you know, like, his life goes to... Oh, he cheats on his wife with somebody else. Are you, Bam. Again, you mean... There again. we go, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we're left with, like, Jim Webb and Lincoln Chafee fighting it out for the Democrats. They'll come back for that, you I was know? I say, they're both out, so... Yeah, but you can just come back. <laughs> okay, sure enough. <laughs> Bernie Sanders drops out. Jim Webb's like, it's Jim's time now to talk. <laughs> Jim's time to shine. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Try and give me the third most amount of talking time during this debate. It's one of two. Yeah. I gotta Lincoln, be in the top two. Lincoln Chafee comes back and he's just like, listen, I told you about the scandals. <laughs> Clearly there's some scandals. <laughs> You remember, Maybe I don't read the bills. Remember but. scandal-free Lincoln Chafee? Here he is again, <laughs> still scandalous. And I will make you a promise. I didn't read the bills in the Senate, and I won't read the bills in the White House. <laughs> Believe you me, I don't even put scandal on my DVR. <laughs> but yeah, so so now we're picking between Jim Webb, Lincoln Chafee, and our Republican Yeah, say, say it's Lincoln Chafee versus Marco Rubio, and every single third-party candidate is a crackpot. Okay. So there's not a third party candidate worth the, like throwing your vote away on. Right. Your choice is well, Lincoln Chafee all, or Marco Rubio. All, third parties are not wasting your vote. Seventy percent of the public sides with a third party and then they all say, Well, we're wasting our vote. Well, there's seventy percent of you. If you voted for one, you would get one in. That aside. That that aside. <laughs> uh I think you've picked maybe the one person I could vote for on that side. Because so, I think I think Rubio is pandering to the conservatives to try and get the nomination, but he's not actually that crazy of a conservative. If it was Chafee Carson? No. Couldn't, no. Chafee I, Trump? Well, wait, first of all, let me say, Ben Carson is proving that neurosurgeons don't necessarily have to be that smart. That's how I take from what he's doing. Uh, but no, Trump, no, fucking absolutely not. Huckabee? <laughs> <laughs> I might vote for Mike Huckabee. Really? Uh, yeah, um, because I can only imagine, uh, you know, listen, if I just don't care about the future of the country, absolutely, sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see the SNL skits that will result from that. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody else on the... Rubio. Rubio, Rubio is that's, it? That's, he's the only guy who sounds presidential. No Christie, you know, no Paul. Uh, uh, Christie's the one, uh, I mean, listen, we already had George W. Bush. I don't want eight more years of, like, on 9-11 I was... You know, right? Uh, and and I, there are some. If I could combine the best parts of some of those candidates, sure. Um, I like Chris, things about Chris Christie. Uh, I like things about, well, not Mike Huckabee or Ben Carson or Trump, but um, Carly Fiorina. I mean, I like things about her. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, I didn't watch the debate. They can't even – I mean I saw highlights, but they can't even get me to watch it because at this point I'm just like, what's the fucking point? Well, um, there's only one guy on the stage. so I missed it because I was up at a concert. Uh, Fan I, Yeah, I didn't get a chance to uh, to see the debate. Yeah. But uh, I guess my number one thought is, is Jeb Bush just done because he's not very good as a politician? Uh, I think he's done. I don't know if it's because he's not that good of a politician. I think uh, I think a better politician would have been able to land that line on on Rubio about the uh, Senate absenteeism. Well, and I, I, his thing landed. He landed his point well. The problem was that Rubio came back at him, and then he stood there like a, a statue, basically. Well, no the way the way that he delivered it didn't knock Rubio over. No, no that he was gave the problem. Him to come back. If if Bush hit him with that line seriously and sort of rallied people's thoughts around it. Yeah. Like, you know, like you're talking about how you're going to save the country, this, that, and the other. You said the same thing when you were running for Senate. How many times have you gone 
and voted for bills? What percentage of the time have you voted for bills? I'm somebody who voted for you. Answer me that question. Yeah. Anybody who brings up a question like that about me being the governor of Florida, I have an answer for them. Answer that question. Well, I see that's it. That's what he the tact he should have taken. But Jeb Bush is too freaking nice. Yeah. By the way, did you see the thing that said that uh, uh, Job on uh, Arrested Development was based on Jeb Bush? No. Oh, God. I'll, I'll send you the link. You can put it in the show notes. Nice. But essentially, what they said is that uh, these guys were doing a comparison <laughs> of the two um, and things that they had a, a like. And then somebody commented from the show and was like, oh, yeah, no, he was definitely in our mindset when we were making the character. <laughs> I'm like, Yes. Um, but yeah, no, Jeb Bush, no. I mean, is there any uh, any of the Republicans other than Rubio? Because I'll give you Rubio. He's young and he's full of fire, and I don't think he's as conservative as he looks like right now. Um, other than that, is there anybody you'd vote for? Uh, no to Trump. Nope. No to Fiorina. No to Christie. No to... Well, Fiorina's not really care, cause, uh, or it's not really fair, because you just hate women, so obviously. Well, clearly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank God I didn't say no to Carson, or else I'd hate black people as well. <laughs> well, you did say no to Carson, so yes, no to black people. Thank you. Um, you see, I'm not. I don't know if I'm eliminating Carson yet. Oh, he's on the fringe for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on the fringe, all right. He is on the fringe. I, yes. Like I couldn't vote for Trump, and, and you'd vote for a guy who is a scientist who doesn't believe in science. No, I'm not saying I would. I'm just saying that if it was... See, it all depends on who comes through on the Democrats. Yeah. Because I, I may just find the most compelling third party if it was, like, Clinton versus Ben Carson, you know? Yeah, well, and see, that's the thing. You eliminated that choice for me. Oh, I know, I but I'm find, saying, like... I can find a good third party to vote for. I think there are a couple of good third parties. Now... I don't think that they will win, but if I can, if they can get over five percent, then they join the national conversation. Well, I mean, I couldn't do it with uh, with the uh, first Obama, Mitt Romney, yeah. Sarah Palin election. I just couldn't. I'm sorry, not Mitt Romney, uh, John McCain. Oh yeah, yeah. During that race, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. I couldn't vote for either one of them. Right. And I found I voted for Gary Johnson that election. Uh, he's the uh, libertarian. Yeah, yeah. And I think I voted for him again in the most recent one as well for the same reason. I just can't like. Well, so can so, in good faith pull the lever for for some <laughs> of these candidates, you know? But well, pulling the lever. Where the hell are you voting? <laughs> I but, wish. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, voting in 1955. Listen, apparently, listen. I like my voting machines like I like my slot machines with the thing I pull. <laughs> now, uh, sidebar. Corey really does hate the slot machines where you just press the button. Yeah, it defies, like, at least I get a physical action out of it if I'm pulling the lever. <laughs> right. And the ones where you pull the lever, you have three things to look at. Some like, cherry, cherry, the, cherry, thousand, yes. Some Boom. of them still have the crossing, though. There's other ways to win. It's, uh, I don't like the crossing. I don't like the options. Right. I like things up or down. The penny slot that costs you $5 per pull because yeah. there's 500 options. Right. right. Yeah. Anyway, I so, like somebody so, to say Pat's by seven and a half. Are you taking it? Yeah, and then I can say, are the Pat's going to score more than eight, eight or more? Like, Win, yes, yeah, yeah. All right, but yeah. So uh, other than Carson and Rubio, anybody else you would even consider? Rand Paul. He's not a damn Republican, and he won't be a Republican. He'll run as an independent. I don't care. I'd, I'd still vote for Rand Paul. And I'm not saying that I eliminate him either. But I'm saying that he's not really a Republican. Well, neither's Trump. Well, and he's, Trump's not a Republican in a different way. And he's the middle of the Republican debate. But Rand Paul is trying to split the party. He just wants people to say, hey, libertarians, you don't have to vote Republican. And when the, in the end, when the end comes, vote for me as an independent. I guess so. I just can't. I'm so tired of this election already. It hasn't oh, even yeah. really started yet. We haven't we even got a we year. haven't done Iowa. We got a year left. We haven't done <laughs> Iowa and I've already decided who I'm not voting for. Like this yeah. is sad. This is a very bad election. Well, and the other problem with this long shit is that when somebody gets knocked out that you would have voted for, like Rubio stumbles in Iowa and then because he's already been campaigning for eight months, he drops out. And I don't even get a chance to vote for him, not that I would, but you know. Right. 
If you were but a registered de- or Republican, you could. Yeah, no, I like to m- my vote to count in Maryland. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of voting in Maryland, though, uh, some exciting news in the city race. Is this uh, the uh, Baltimore corner? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where you get the straight dope? As you know, we are your Baltimore podcast, and what is growing in popularity is our newest and most favorite uh, segment, the Baltimore corner. Where you get the straight dope. Damn right. Uh, so heading into Baltimore news, uh, one of my my pick for mayor, if I could pick one. Uh, and all haters on all of the podcasts aside, I'm a big Nick Mosby fan, and he is announcing he's going to enter the mayor's race. Yeah, and I, 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 I tentatively like Nick Mosby as well. Full uh, fire. Yeah, I just don't know if it's. I don't know if he's a revolutionary voice. Well, listen, no, nobody think, in that race is, and I think that's what the city desperately needs. It needs well, somebody and, who. It needs somebody who's going to live by the term limit. I, I like can stand somebody can, who could run for four years and be done with it. You know, I can agree with you uh, and say I wish there was another voice. But if there's not going to be one, this is the guy I want to vote for. I listen. Who who is going to do anything to help the city? Who's already in the race? Sheila Dixon. No, she had a chance to do it. She's not going to do it. She ruined it the first time. Yeah. She took her opportunity and made it worse. So is there anybody who's in the race who's going to be that revolutionary voice? No, I'm saying if you're asking me for, like, who I would vote for right this second. Yeah. Then, yeah, Mosby would probably be the vote. Right. And then that's going to cause a problem, we'll see. But could cause a problem, which is the only issue I have with him. I just... There was a line from uh, uh, Ken Burns Baseball. Yeah. Where Joe Torrey was talking about George Steinbrenner. And he was like, he's the boss. Right. I know that, you know, regardless of how I do, he could come into the office and fire me tomorrow. Right. And that's it. Like, you know, I, I can't live my life assuming that I'm going to have 10 years to make this franchise great. Right. I could get fired at any day. So every single day I have to make it count. Right, And that's got to be the view of whoever becomes mayor. We can't have somebody who sits along with the same old, same old. And the problems that have plagued the city for way too long, we got to get ahead of things. We can't keep falling behind. We have to, we have to have dramatic increases in a lot of things. Like schools, for one, is yeah. just an absolute abysmal shit show. The fact that nobody can seem to come up with anything to cure urban blight. Or the fact that there's businesses shuttering all over the place, that the level of poverty in the city is absolutely crazy out of control. Well, how about the fact that they're demolishing historical landmarks because we just can't take care of them? An issue that I know is close to your heart. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Let's break away from Mosby real quick to bring this up. Yeah. In the the show notes, uh, you'll see an article from the Baltimore Brew. Uh, demolition by neglect dooms city-owned Howard Street landmark. Uh, so there's the New Academy Hotel, which is uh, on the corner of Howard and Center, I believe it is. It's right next uh, door to your favorite, or Howard and Franklin. It's right yeah. near. It's right next to the Mayfair. Right. It used to be uh, housing for local artists. Uh, over the years, it had several other. Uh, uses, but I mean, it, it's... <laughs> what, what was one of those? Well, there, there was a club called Bottoms Up that was in there. Uh, <laughs> right. That's for one. Yeah. Um, not a strip club, just a club. Yeah, it just sounds like a strip club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they missed out on the opportunity to use the Bottoms Up song. <laughs> when people walk oh. in the door, Bottoms Up, Bottoms Up. <laughs> Throw your hands up. Um... Which I heard a lot this weekend, by the way. Did you? Popular, popular Halloween song, apparently. Yeah, so basically the – somebody owns this building. I thought it was the, the Baltimore Development Group. Which is essentially the city. Which Yeah, which is essentially the city. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's fallen apart. The roof's caved in. Uh, the <sighs> entire inside is just burned out and looks terrible and there's been – you know, people, homeless squatters in there doing drugs and right. all sorts of stuff like that. Um, 
the the building looks the way it does because nobody took care of it, and that was the city's responsibility. Should have been, yeah. And the Mayfair is the same way. It's sitting right next door to it. Uh, the reason why it would have to be completely gutted and redone if somebody like me bought it is because it, it they didn't take care of it at all. They didn't even bother. I do dig the fact that there are a lot of people in Baltimore who who would be interested in us buying and changing. Yeah, that. that I thought that was funny when we were at the at the Parkway uh, party. Yeah. For the Parkway's 100th birthday. That so many people, when I was just like, one of these days I want to buy the Mayfair. They're like, oh man, please do it. That well, is, and the thing is, all you have they to do is the podcast. <laughs> they were excited that I might actually do it. Not keeping in mind that I don't have an extra $30 million lying around in my bank account to do it. But Yet. 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 Yeah. Right. Hey, listen, See, I, we just need you to click through Amazon. I make, <laughs> I make this movie in March, and then next thing you know, the Mayfair Theater is being rebuilt. Hmm, yep, yeah, so hey, if all, anybody wants to get on the ground floor. All you need to do is have everybody in America see it twice. There you go. And there I am, in the penthouse of the Mayfair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, so, I mean, the city's got a lot of problems. Obviously, the, the Mayfair and the uh, New Academy are just two of many. Well, and, you know, I... Again, I'm. I love the Mayfair. I love the New Academy. I think that these are things worthy of being saved and preserved and given to rightful owners who are going to do with them like right, honorable things, like keep them as theaters. Right. Yeah. But I just the fact that we get so much of our news through little sound bites released through the naming of programs. Yeah. That come associated with hashtags. Right. Like, the fact that that the mayor's office for the last six years in particular have sort of been like, you know, we're starting our hashtag, be more safe, be more, (sighs) come with a be more something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Be more active. Hashtag, be more active. It's going to be about opening up new parks for city kids to go and, and have fun. And gallivant about with other friends and not sell drugs. And to cool off from their hot schools after the AC breaks. Right. And they have a they have a little logo with kids smiling in it and everything like that, but <sighs> it's just bullshit. It's just yeah. it's something they're 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 not actually doing things, they're just saying they're doing things. Yeah. And then so we talked about this on an episode a ways back. Yeah. We actually talked about it the episode before Freddie Gray happened. Oh, God. Yeah. So back in, uh, you're going to go want to go back until uh, probably episodes in the 50s, maybe? March-ish? It was March. Yeah. yeah. So it was uh, uh, Dead Fish, Politics, that sort of. It was right around uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Yeah. We talked about the long and sorted history of Baltimore's racist public housing development. Right. And just this today, the sun sent out this, uh, Baltimore housing authority eliminates its inspector general. And for those who are un, uh, uninformed, the inspector general is basically someone who works for an office, but independent of that office. And when you, they, I mean, the best way I can make them think of it is it's, it's a whistleblower who's paid to blow the whistle though. On stuff that they do. If you if you want to think about it in another way, like uh, uh, you remember when Ken Starr was elected as like a special prosecutor, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Clinton could have fired him at any point. He worked it for looks him. Bad. Yeah, but it looks really bad if you do that. Right. This is supposed to be an independent invest, in, investigation, and this is a somebody who is supposed to independently investigate claims against the housing authority. And uh, uh, they haven't had one since apparently last fall when they voted not to refill the seat. And they've just announced that they're going to be eliminating it altogether. And it says here in the article, Housing Authority had an inspector general since at least 2009 and had been one of the nation's third biggest, three biggest housing authorities to employ the position. Chicago and New York City still having theirs in place. Right. And, and keep in mind, by the way, that Baltimore has... Uh, One of the largest number of public housing, despite the fact that we're 26th largest city or something like that. Yeah. It's... And so they don't have an inspector general, and lo and behold, now there's a huge, uh, basically, repair for sex controversy going on in the public housing. 
it, it all boils down to this. There's no, there's no transparency in the Baltimore city government. Right. And there's nobody who's, you know why I think part of the reason that Bernie Sanders is so popular right now? <laughs> Cause he's a crazy old man who says what he wants. And yeah. But I mean, it, it's, it, he's very much saying, listen, I might only have a limited amount of time to tell you things. Right. Listen so to I'm me. doing it now. Like, yeah. You know, I could I could not be running for president tomorrow. I could die. I could choke on a hoagie. <laughs> Any number of things could happen. So right. listen to me today. I'm making the best of the moment. Well, and that's the thing I do like about Nick Mosby is he's young. And I always, for some reason, I mean, Bernie Sanders is the exception to that. But young people are the ones who, are, who can say, um, you know, I have a track record of doing good things. And I'm going to continue to do it. Sheila Dixon can't say that. None of the councilmen are running I, can say that. I, I just want – if Nick Mosby could prove to me that he would walk into an into a, a, a city council meeting or something like that or just like yeah. a, a committee meeting and just like push all the desk – all the paper off the desk and scream like, what, do you, me- like <laughs> what do you mean – that the camera vendor who's going to be doing the police cameras is the same one who did our failed speed camera program. Are you fucking insane? Yeah. Say something or, like that out loud and then just <laughs> – and then I'll be like, oh, okay, he's trying. Well, now see, the blame lays has, on these five people who aren't doing anything about it. He has done that before in his position on the city mm-hmm. council. He said, what are we doing here? What is this? Why aren't we doing something differently? And that's why I think that he'll be good. And again, uh, he may turn out to be just another crony. Uh, it was – you know, the Baltimore Sun also had a story that said that, you know, we are passing the torch from the Rawlingses to the Mosby's. Um, and that they're just the new Baltimore family. So I just, uh, Uh, it's frustrating. And like I said, right now he's the best, he's the best I've seen. And I like him because he's young. Um, I, you know, I don't, I'm not voting for him for what his wife has done. I wouldn't vote for him for what his wife has done. Um, I'm not sure I agree with what his wife has done, but I'm glad that, that there are new couples who are caring about this city that no one has seemed to care about for a long time. Nobody well, in government. Well, we're a couple of guys who care about this city. Absolutely. And we're going to st- keep talking about it every single week here on the Baltimore Corner. So make sure you join us for uh, the Baltimore Corner where... You get the straight dope. One more time. Baltimore Corner where... You get the straight dope. There we go. Okay. <laughs> take All right. two. Landed on take two. <laughs> Got it. All right. Two take Corey. But, uh, yeah, you can definitely uh, de- keep check back on our previous episodes. Uh, we'll have to figure out which one it was that we talked about this before. But I'll, this is going to be a continuing problem. I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes. I, I just – politically, I think Mosby kind of has, has an issue here. Yeah. Because so much of his candidacy is going to be linked to the performance of his wife in the trial, you know? That's the sad part. And yeah. if, if she lets all the officers walk, then his ability to get elected becomes a lot – more difficult even though it really shouldn't but yeah i agree 100 percent on that unfortunately so well, you know we might also be in the middle of like major major upheaval if the police officers don't get convicted at this point you know that that's true it could just it could be uh, elections are a moot point uh decision 2016 may be deciding whether or not to burn the city down or who to vote <laughs> for, really so and if you burn the city down then we can't save the mayfair at all so right Unless you just listen, if you can go around and just it, the fire department can go just to those historic theaters, that's what we'd prefer. No, no please don't. <laughs> Save your theaters; they're a, they're a connection to our past. Yes, and of course, if you uh, click through the banner on the uh, that will soon be coming to the website, you'll be able to help us help save the Bayfair Theater. Yeah, just every every single time you buy a vacuum cleaner from Amazon, <laughs> we get that much closer. Yeah. To uh, re-carpeting the place, basically. And to bringing you more fantastic content like you've listened to this week. So uh, make sure you check out old episodes, stay up on the new episodes, and vote for us on the Mobbies. Yes, and indeed. And link to the as well. And if you want to find more of the Anthem, com, Corey to the Anthem on Facebook, Mobby nominated Twitter, Mobby nominated Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595, which is not up for mobby consideration. <laughs> What's that number again? 443-219-7595. And uh, you can find me on all your social networks at Robert and Cheek. Maybe not mobby, mobby uh, nominated, but nominated for awesomeness. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, 
uh, Facebook, available everywhere. Uh, you can make sure you check out robertincheek.com where you can find links to my political blog, which these guys I've been hanging out with are encouraging me to do a little more posting on, so hopefully we'll have some new stuff coming. Uh, and everything else, including links to my books, that, which you can buy through a banner on Amazon. All right. Well, I think we've done good here today. Uh, we've done something. I don't know if it's good or not, <laughs> especially the technology. We'll see how this pans out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully people are listening to this episode. That would be nice. Yeah, and of course next week we will be back uh, to being live in the studio, the other Anthem Studios, deep below the earth in Parkville, Maryland. All right. Well, uh, you have anything else to say before we go? Um, well, this is an interesting experiment, and um, I hope we got some new listeners. I hope that, that everything that's going on with the mobbies, I hope you've listened this far and that you enjoy it. Um, we again, I, like I said before, we do this for you. So this is about. Uh, you stepping in and listening to our conversation, and, and we hope it's entertaining. And, and please do reach out to us with any of your comments or criticisms. We're always open to that. All right. Well, uh, for Corey. <laughs> Are we going back to a classic? <laughs> what? Uh, anyway, thank you guys for listening. Again, please do like and subscribe everywhere. Uh, for Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. You think I should run for mayor? Absolutely. All right. Well, maybe let's talk about that next week. You're the anthem party. Da, 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 da,